Police cell phone analyst Lamberta Stain has revealed that there were eight phone calls between Kelly Kumalo and former football star David Matebula. He says it's possible Matebula's phone may have been used to insert a new SIM card. Our reporter, Mangoba Mkun, who's been following this case, was in court earlier. He's back now and joining me in studio. Uh, good afternoon, Mangoba. Uh, welcome and thank you for joining us. Today we learned that uh, in court that uh, from the five suspects, some of them had contacted each other prior to the killing of Senzo Meiwa in October 2014. Certainly, Pratan, and I think this is crucial evidence as far as this case is concerned. Of course, it also just, uh, you know, thickens the plot as far as what really happened uh, when Senzo Meiwa was killed. But I think crucial uh, to the evidence that we heard today uh, is the links between the suspects that have been arrested there before court, uh, the five accused uh, that uh, are charged with the murder of Senzo Kumala. But I just want to uh, bring in what happened yesterday, Pratan, before we go to that. Uh, yesterday we heard, of course, uh, the links between Kelly Kumalo and one of these suspects, uh, Fisogu Klintuli. Uh, we were told that there were two uh, uh, conversations or calls that had happened in August as well as on the 15th of October, just days before Senzo Meiwa was killed. And of course, that today, uh, we've got to learn that, uh, in fact, Fisogu Klintuli also had contact with uh, accused number three, I'm he also had contact with accused number one as well as accused number two. Uh, so the only uh, suspect uh, seemingly that he didn't have uh, contact with is accused number four in this particular matter. And it seems that there were regular calls between them, uh, which suggests that they either knew each other or that, uh, you know, they had uh, known each other for quite some time. This is all around the time before October. This is all around the time, uh, Pratenu, we understand before uh, this all unfolded uh, uh, in Fosloris uh, when Senzo Meiwa was killed. So this is uh, very important as far as this case because you recall that uh, earlier on, Afri Forum had said that they believe that the right suspects are arrested as far as this is concerned. Afri Forum, let's just remind our viewers, still representing the, the family. family. Of, yes, of yes. Senzo Meiwa. Even the family themselves, Pratenu, saying that they also believe, uh, they were told, in fact, they told me last year that there we're told by uh, the police minister that uh, they have the right suspects and that there is a mastermind uh, who has not been arrested. So it raises quite a lot of questions about the possible motive as far as this is concerned. But perhaps let's take a listen, Pratan, uh, to what uh, Stain had to reveal about the linkages between these suspects. The next number I, I retrieved from the download of suspect number three. The number was saved on his phone as Mufukani Kumalu. It's another number of suspect number five with the number 27791-490821. Then I move down straight underneath that number. That number of suspect number five also got contact with suspect number two, Bongani Sandisu Mtansi, with the number 27609-016-890. In the same number, the one there on top, I move to this number down here now. The suspect number five also got contact with suspect number one, September Sabia, alias Musi, with cell phone number 2779-379-0137. You know, just listening to what you are reporting now, Mangoba, and listening to this bite of, of staying, he may yet prove to be one of those crucial evidence uh, uh, providers in, in this case. But he also spoke about Senzo Meiwa's phone SIM card. Mm. Tell us about that. Well, pretend before I get to that, in fact, I think I'm reminded of, uh, you know, one of the revelations as far as this is concerned uh, from accused number three's phone uh, that was found. Uh, one of the numbers uh, which belongs uh, to accused number five, Fiso Wichlintuli, was written, in fact, as Mvoga Kumalo. Uh, which, you know, has many connotations as far as this case is concerned. But I guess this is crucial information that shows uh, that there was indeed a link between these suspects and that they communicated at some point or the other as far as, uh, you know, this case is concerned. So 
when we get to the issue of uh, Senzo Meiwa's phones, of course, there's also questions about what happened to Senzo Meiwa's phone. Uh, you recall that Zandile Kumalo had said to court that uh, Senzo Meiwa's phone was, in fact, in the house when they came back from the hospital. It was under a stove. I think she said this is where police had then recovered it. But what Stain's evidence show and the data from the cell phone shows is that, in fact, that phone pinged round about 10 o'clock, which is about two hours after Senzo Meiwa was shot, according to the evidence that we heard. It pinged at the hospital where Senzo Meiwa had been taken, which suggests that then the phone uh, had then been perhaps placed there at a later stage. But that's not the only shocker. But then there's also the issue of the SIM swap, which we understand happened the very next day after Senzo Meiwa was killed. And we understand that that particular SIM card has been linked uh, to a device that uh, was owned by a former soccer player, uh, David Matebula. And uh, we understand that there were calls, eight calls that were made between Kelly Kumalo and David Matebula on the 27th of October. And those calls were not answered. It's not clear who made a call to who, but there were eight uh, calls, forwarded calls, as Staines puts it, that were made throughout this phone, which suggests that then uh, it might have been a hand phone or a, fo a phone belonging to David Matebula that this SIM card, the new SIM card, had then been used or inserted uh, to make those particular calls. But perhaps let's, let Stain explain this a bit further. We move to the next one. There, here we got the handset number now. Handset number is 35701. 804-021687. That's it. That's the number of the handset. This handset and the number receive a call from cell phone number 278723004001. Also on the 27th of October 2014 at 16.2150. And just to point out to the court, my lord, uh, it's the same SIM card, the new one, with the number 65. 501-257-060-4203. Then we follow up on the handset number and then link to the number 2772-149-3899. And it belongs to David Matabula. And there was eight calls between David Matabula and Kelly Kumalo. Uh, and can My you just say, I'm sorry, oh. can I just tell the court, how did you establish that it was a call between Kelly Kumalo yes. and, and, and David Matebula? If I go to the, the section 205, then I could identify okay. yes. that there was, the eight calls was between that number and that number from Kelly Kumalo, but the phone was still off, all the calls have been called forwards. But my opinion is, it could be that it's an old phone of David Makubala that they just used to put in the new SIM card. Now, Mangoba, one of the suspects has been described before, even by other witnesses, as somebody who had uh, dreadlocks, including the neighbor, uh, Miss Mukete, said one of the people was running away that she saw at that night had dreadlocks, okay? How, now, how has it been linked to dreadlocks and a suspect? Well, it's interesting, Pradhan, because, uh, you know, one of the things that uh, Stain had done is that uh, he had studied one of the accused phone and looked into the pictures that uh, this particular accused had taken. So uh, this was accused three who was arrested in Devlin, we understand, uh, in 2017. And after his arrest, his phone was confiscated. And then he went through the photos uh, in his phone. And some of those photos uh, show um, Toby Simnube on the day uh, in fact, a day before uh, Senzo Meiwa was shot. And in those photos, I think it's a, about two or three photos, he can clearly be seen on those photos with dreadlocks that, uh, you know, are over uh, and way over the shoulder uh, length. Quite long dreadlocks. Quite long dreadlocks. And at, I think at one point, uh, those dreadlocks are tied in one of the pictures, which seemingly suggested that at the time of this incident, um, Toby Simnube did have dreadlocks. Mm, had and it dreadlocks. raises questions, of course, as to whether he was, uh, you know, the alleged intruder that was in the house that had dreadlocks. You recall the testimony that uh, that intruder was the one that uh, carried the firearm and ultimately fired the shot that might have killed Senzo Miwa. So there are still questions about whether it is in Toby Simnube, but what it seems to suggest is that it possibly might be him. But perhaps let's take a listen to that evidence about his dreadlocks. 
This photo you can see the dreadlock is behind this here. It's a, it's a sort of a photo. No, no, just repeat it. I can hear you. Sure. Other people must hear you also. On, on this photo, the dreadlocks is been together like a pony stick. Now, when you say the dreadlocks, I hear you, but whose dreadlocks are you talking about on that photo? Suspect number five, Suspect right. number three. Suspect number three. Okay, fine. Dreadlocks of suspect number three. That's good. Hmm. As you said when you started giving us this update uh, on this Friday afternoon about this case, wrapping up another week, the plot thickens. You use those words, Mangoba. Okay, what's going to happen on Monday? The court will resume hearing evidence. Who's on the stand? Who's going to be cross-examined? Do you have any idea? Well, we're expecting cross-examination to start to pretend, on Monday, and we're expecting the defense, of course, to pose those questions and to try and poke holes in the testimony of uh, Colonel State. But uh, I guess it's, it's very technical, and I mean, it will be very difficult uh, to uh, dispute some of the evidence that has been given. So they have a tough job ahead of them. And uh, I guess they'll have to use this weekend to ensure that they come prepared, uh, because, uh, I mean, what we saw today in court was quite damning. And the links that have been made, uh, you know, speak of, uh, you know, a possible motive uh, that uh, perhaps is, was behind this particular issue. So we're going to hear, Pradhan, how they're going to, uh, you know, argue uh, and yeah, post it's questions. It's going to be interesting to see the defense's text. I mean, there's different defenses mm -hmm. because some of the accusers have uh, separate, uh, separate lawyers. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Mangoba Mkunu, uh, giving us the uh, lowdown what happened uh, in court uh, today. Thanks, uh, Mkringwane. Now, let's move to...